Hey there, thanks for joining us for another edition of our Sky Tonight program. This is your host again, Seth Mayo, Curator of Astronomy for the Loma Planetarium at MOAS. And in this program, we're covering the dates of June 20th through June 26th. We're going to start by talking about the summer solstice, the beginning of summer for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. Then we're going to move on to Mercury reaching what's called dichotomy when it's at half phase and it's reached a pretty high position above the eastern horizon. Then we'll end with a look at the moon moving through those early morning planets in a really cool lineup to behold as well. So let's dig right into it. On the morning of Tuesday, June 21st, we have the summer solstice. And for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, that officially is the beginning of the summertime. And as we've talked about before, this is when the sun's position or its movement across the sky is highest above what's called the celestial equator. Seeing them here in Stellarium can kind of help us understand what is going on. So the ecliptic is the path that the sun seems to make in the sky as we go around the sun. It looks like the sun is moving through our sky. And we have the celestial equator. You take Earth's equator and project it to the sky. That can divide the sky into a northern and a southern section. So on this date, we find that the sun is highest above that celestial equator. And again, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, that means the sun is highest in the sky at this time of the year. And that's why it is warmer at this time of year. We're getting more direct light and energy from our sun, this big ball of very hot gas, and that is hitting us more directly. So right now we are tilted more towards the sun, which provides the reason for the season. And on this morning, the exact time of this is at 914 Universal Time. But if you're on the East Coast of the United States, that would be actually 514 AM. So it's actually before the sun rises. But really throughout the day, you can celebrate the summer solstice. And it's also the time of year when we have basically the longest day and shortest night. At least it's around this time. But for our Southern Hemisphere friends, this is the opposite for them. In June, they have the winter solstice. And moving to South America, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere here in Stellarium, we can see something a little bit different on this morning. So for them, the sun still is farthest north of the celestial equator. But if in the Southern Hemisphere, things are a bit flipped and the sun charts a very low course across the Northern sky. So this is when the sun is lowest in the sky in the Southern Hemisphere, which is the start of the winter time in that part of the world because they're tilted away from the sun, opposite of what we're experiencing in the Northern Hemisphere. I always thought that's quite interesting to have such different seasons just by moving North and South on Earth, but it's all due to Earth's tilt changing as you do so. But going back to our museum in the Northern Hemisphere, or wherever you are in the world, we can celebrate that beginning of summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere. If you happen to get up early in the morning this week, looking towards the east before sunrise, we talked about recently that Mercury has now reached a position highest above the horizon for you to see, at least far enough away from the sun's glare. And what's happening with Mercury, particularly on the morning of Wednesday the 22nd, is that Mercury will be at an interesting phase. What we're gonna do is we'll zoom right into Mercury, this tiny little planet that orbits very quickly around the sun, since it is the closest planet to our sun. And as we get a little closer to this grayish world, which honestly does look like the moon when you see pictures of it, but now that we're looking at it here, we can see that Mercury is at half phase, or what's called Mercury at dichotomy. There's a dichotomy between the night side and the day side. You see an equal amount of night and day from Earth. And as we've mentioned before, the inner planets like Mercury and Venus can have phases just like the moon. If you're an outer planet, Mars and beyond, there are no phases of those planets, but for those inner planets, because they can move around the sun in a particular way, the sun can light them up at different angles and we see different amounts of the surface as seen from Earth. So this is kind of a neat moment. Mercury is still very low in the sky and it may be hard to see this due to its position and its proximity to the glare of the sun, but it's kind of cool to know. And this is actually probably a good moment to see Mercury because it's kind of in an in-between area where it's not too far away from us to be too small, but also not too close to the sun. And 
a large enough phase to see. So if we go back a few days here, we'll actually see that Mercury is actually closer to us, but it's at a lesser phase and closer to the sun. This was earlier in June. So that makes it kind of difficult to see, even though we're closer to it. As we move back towards this week here, you'll find that Mercury is a little farther from us, but it's a larger phase going back to the 22nd at dichotomy. But then if we move ahead in time, let's watch Mercury a little bit more here. And now you're actually gonna see it move a little farther away and have a smaller angular diameter in the sky and even a larger phase as well. But the other problem is it's starting to move back towards the sun again until it's gonna be hard to see once again. So that will make it kind of tough to see a little bit after dichotomy and a bit before. But around that 22nd date here, this week here, maybe even the 23rd, is a great time to check out this planet along with those other planets here that we'll talk about more in just a moment. So as we stick to that early morning sky, I wanna show you where the moon will be relative to the planets and a really cool ordering that will happen with these solar system objects. So again, this is still early morning before sunrise, and I will say, don't look after about 5.45 in the morning, at least if you wanna see all five planets and the moon at the same time. You could get out a little bit later to see the moon and the brighter planets, they still show up, but if you wanna see some of these dimmer objects, you wanna be out at a time when the sun is not too bright and filling the sky with light once again in the morning. So this is on the morning of the 21st here, Tuesday, and we'll see the waning moon at half phase or what's called last quarter phase, very near Jupiter. And I'll turn on the planet labels for reference here so we can see them. So we have the moon there and Jupiter very close or fairly close by that morning. And as we continue on through the rest of these mornings here, we'll go to the 22nd, and then you'll see it close to Mars, which is kind of nice. And then after that, the 23rd, you see the moon move a little bit closer to the horizon and on the other side of Mars. And then by the 24th here, which is Friday morning, we have one of the best lineups I've been looking forward to. So what we have here is all five visible eye planets in the sky with the waning crescent moon. And what's also cool is that the planets are in order just like they are in the solar system. So if you look here near the horizon where the sun is about to rise here, and this is still at about 545 in the morning local time. We have Mercury here, then Venus, the brightest planet you'll see out of all of them, then the crescent moon, then Mars. You have Jupiter there, which is also fairly bright, and all the way over here, more to the south, is Saturn. So it's so cool to have all of these planets in sort of its own lineup that's correct in the solar system, and the moon joining this lineup as well. Now, if you could put Earth here, even though we live on Earth, Looking down, of course, that's where our planet is. But just for fun here, if we put Earth there, then the order would be really correct there with Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Moon, then Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So I love this lineup. It doesn't happen all too often to have this many planets at one time and also lined up correctly in the right order. If you want a similar lineup of planets like we have here in 2022, you have to wait 18 years from now until August of 2040. And here we have it set in Stellarium on that day in 2040. And instead of the planets being in the early morning that we have now in 2022, by that date in the future, this will be in the evening sky looking towards the west. And the planets actually are pretty close to each other by that time frame. You have Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, so they're all gathered pretty close. But this lineup may be not as good as the one going on now because Mercury is below the horizon, or at least really hard to see because it's so close to the sun. If I turn off the ground here, you can see Mercury there as well. So that order kind of works the same way as the one we have going on in the early morning right now here in 2022, but maybe not as good, at least if you wanna see all the planets easily enough at one time. So right now, it is really great to enjoy this lineup where you can easily see all five visible eye planets and the moon. Again, this is on the 24th. And if we go through the rest of the week here to the 25th, you'll see the crescent moon get a little smaller and get close to Venus and Mercury by the weekend. And just to add some bonus planets here, if you had a telescope and we can brighten some of the dimmer planets or at least brighten their labels, I'm gonna show you that there's actually two more in our solar system that you could technically see, which is really cool to know. 
So if we bring that up high enough, at least the label brightness here, you'll find some other objects in the solar system. But in particular, I just wanted you to notice Uranus is in this area and Neptune as well. Now they don't follow the order here, but that's okay. Just to know that every planet in the solar system, at least regular planet in the solar system, is out in the sky at one time in the general vicinity of each other is really cool. And also, again, pretty rare for that to happen. So I think it's worth mentioning this planet lineup over and over again, like I've been doing, because we don't get it very often. I really hope that you all get a chance to see this at least once all these planets strewn across our sky. You can really get a sense of the solar system that we live in. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of our Sky Tonight program. We always appreciate your support. And if you're in the area, please stop by the Museum of Arts and Sciences and definitely the Loman Planetarium. We're running shows every day. If you want any more information about our exhibits, our shows in the planetarium, or other programs, please check out our website. And tune into our various social media channels. We're posting some great content about art, science, and history. So we hope to see you back here again. Take care, and of course, happy stargazing.